Are you struggling with that stubborn, life-threatening hemorrhage? No matter what you do, it just keeps exsanguinating and exsanguinating. You keep putting gauze upon gauze upon gauze, and you squish the whole thing down, but it just keeps bleeding. This problem is so frustrating. But wait, there's a new technique. It's called direct pressure. All you need is a single pad of gauze and your own finger, and it works like magic. Let's watch this again in slow motion. Here is a life-threatening hemorrhage, and here is your finger and a pad of gauze. And with direct pressure, the bleeding stops. It costs zero dollars and zero cents with no payments. Brought to you by Science. People always ask us, in the event of a mass casualty incident, what could they do? What could they do differently? Today I'm going to talk about the few little things that people can do to save a life. In the event that somebody is bleeding in a place where you can act to save their life, the first thing you can do is take a jacket, take something soft, and you're going to apply it to where they're bleeding. If it's their arms, legs, or where they attach, you're going to just simply place it on the area that's bleeding and push really hard and hold it until help comes or the bleeding stops. If help doesn't come right away, and you need to sustain this and you're tired, you can either secure it with an ace wrap or a belt or anything that's gonna hold that pressure in place. At the very least, switch out with somebody else who can maintain the pressure until help arrives. The hemorrhage control kit is very, very simple. The ones that we have here at Bumpsy say traumatic bleeding and on the other side have the instructions. So even in a bad situation when people are panicked, they can see the pictures and know what to do. It's very simple. Within this kit are all the tools that you need to make this happen. So if you've got somebody who is bleeding from a bad wound, and we're gonna say for instance that this is on their leg, and I have access to this kit, and somebody has been holding pressure, someone brings the kit, and now I need to move to a tourniquet to, in order to stop the bleeding. I have the ability to take this tourniquet, open it up, place it above the wound, turn, and people ask, how many times do you turn? You turn until the bleeding stops, and you'll see that it's actually a very physical thing. Secure it and over. If you're lucky enough to have a pen, you can write the time here, but I don't really care where you put it. Just make note of the time. It helps with decision making when the patient is taken to the emergency department to get further care. If you have something that is within a shoulder or you're unable to put a, a tourniquet on, um, the reason why we have gauze and this combat gauze is what they call it, or quick clot, is that then you can pack the wound and stop the bleeding by constricting the vessels on the inside. Well, that sounds kind of complicated, but basically all you're doing is putting pressure on the inside instead of pressure on the outside. And again, what you do is you open up this package and you would pack the wound. Until you cannot do it anymore. And at that point, you're going to hold pressure. And again, you're going to hold pressure for at least two to four minutes, if not longer, sometimes up to 10 minutes, or until help arrives. What you've done is you've given that person every opportunity to survive in a bad situation. This is just a few steps that you can do. It doesn't guarantee that there will be a bad outcome or a good outcome. It just means that there's something that you can do to help in, in a time of need.